But what I would ask you to think about is where Islam, I think, has a fundamental deficiency. Look around as you look at the Muslim world, and I don't know exactly where you're coming from, or you know, would you view yourself as Salafi, Wahhabi, just an Orthodox Sunni? You know, where are you coming from? I I, I don't know. You you tend toward the more conservative stuff, okay? Look around the Islamic world at people celebrating Muhammad's birthday and prayers to Muhammad and the people weeping outside of his tomb and and all of these things and the exaltation of Muhammad that you can see in so many strains of Islamic piety. And ask yourself the question, why is that? I mean, I think a lot of people make a very strong argument that's a fundamental denial of Tawheed. It borders on and becomes shirk from your own perspective. But why is it? Why does that happen? You see, I would suggest to you that the Quran, and listen to what I'm saying, I have to say this, this is what my honest conclusion, in its ignorance of the preceding revelations, which it itself claims were revelations, but in its ignorance of the content and meaning of those revelations, specifically the Torah and the Injil, because it rejects that revelation that is found in Jesus Christ, in the Incarnation, His deity, etc., it forces the Muslims to look for this kind of connectedness to the transcendent God. And the only person they can find it in, in light of your own teachings, that he is the greatest of mankind, and he's the f final prophet, and he's the perfect example, and all the rest of this, it has to be Muhammad. And so you get this elevation of Muhammad, even far beyond what he himself ever allowed in his own lifetime, even if we accept the, the Hadith sources as, as accurately representing his own words. He didn't, he didn't want that kind of adoration that frequently he receives today. And I suggest to you the reason that happens is because we are created in the image of God. And he has placed within us that desire to have relationship with him. And Islam, in essence, does not allow that. You don't have a mediator. You don't have one who can meet in the middle. You don't have the incarnate one. hints of old um, types of like worship and and you said you wanted to come back to it but you, you didn't get a chance to go back to it uh, during the presentation yeah so what I said is that Islam is a strictly monotheistic religion but yeah sometimes the 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 uh, like followers of Islam who are not uh, educated in their religion and who might be influenced by some practices in societies in which uh, they have lived uh, may exhibit some behavior which is uh, not, not in accordance with that strict uh, monotheism. Uh, we know that there is only one God and Muhammad on whom be peace uh, is a servant and messenger of that one God. Sometimes some Muslims may in praise and, and adoration of the Prophet Muhammad as a prophet and as a human being may exaggerate uh, to the extent of uh, saying things about him which uh, as Muslims, we should not say because we want to preserve the distinction between God and his creatures. Muhammad, on whom be peace, is a creature of God. Sometimes some poetry uh, might be uh, sung about the Prophet, peace be upon him, and as we said in poetry, sometimes exaggerated language is used. Some Muslims may use that kind of exaggerated language. Uh, sometimes the Muslims may even start thinking of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in ways which do not seem to to fit the description of him in the Quran. The Quran describes him as a great man to be true, but still a man. Uh, at the end of the, uh, of the 18th chapter of the Quran says, Kul innama ana basharum mithlukum. Say, I am uh, only a, a, a mortal like you. Yuha ilayya annama ilahukum ilahum wahid. It has been revealed to me that your God is only one God. Faman yarju liqa'a rabbihi fal amalan salihan so whoever wants to meet his Lord, 
uh, let him uh, uh, not uh, ascribe, uh, let him worship uh, his Lord and not ascribe to him uh, and do good works and not uh, ascribe to uh, his Lord any partners. So you should not imagine that God has a partner, a, another deity along with him, or a friend, a consort, a co-equal or something like this. Uh, sometimes Muslims may exaggerate the position of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He's declared in this verse to be only a mortal. But sometimes some Muslims imagine him to be like present in, in the Muslim gathering. So some Muslims think that if they recite a certain uh, praise of the Prophet, peace be upon him, in a gathering, then the Prophet somehow comes in, in the gathering. And, and if you imagine that some Muslims in another part of the world are also reciting the same praise, then you must think that he's in the other gathering too. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't fit with Islamic theology. But sometimes people are not uh, fully aware of their faith, and they may go into some exaggerated practices like this. We, we need to understand our religion well and represent it correctly.